Mark Holman, thank you for being on my show today. It's a pleasure, Larry. You know, just before we start, I, I want to do a little introduction with uh, with how you and I met. I just, uh, this is important because when I met you many, many years ago and I brought you into this industry, we had a deal. We had a contract, a verbal contract, and the condition was very simple. I said, I will bring you into this uh, industry if you as promise. As you, I get you out. <laughs> exactly. Now, I think this... I, I, today is going to be the perfect day to let everybody know how you did that, how you got me out of the business. A, a couple of years ago, along with bringing in a container of garlic graters, Mark Holman also brought in a container of infected bats from China, <laughs> released them. He released them on his uh, beautiful property in Milton and all out into the wild, nay, into the world. Um, which, of course, affected billions and billions of people, all to fulfill his part of the contract was to get me off the treadmill. So, Mark, uh, first of all, thank you. Although your methods may have been a little extreme, I alleviate you now from that part of the contract. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Larry. Thank you for letting me out of the deal now. Yeah, so uh, it's... it's uh, it's great to have you on. So you're at home. You're uh, you're at your your property. Beautiful property you have there. Tell everyone where you are. Well, we we were, are very lucky. We just happened to buy at the right time and and kind of coincided a little bit with the ShamWow extravaganza. And I mean, just timing has worked out very well for us. We've got seven acres out in Campbellville, which is just west of Milton, which is about forty minutes west, say, of the Toronto airport. And uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's like it's like a provincial park. We've got trails, yes. we've got trees. We, it's it's the most gorgeous piece of property. Like, and you go I've jogging, ever. you go jogging on your own property through the trails. Yeah, well, 20 years ago, I had a dream when we moved here <laughs> of a wood chip trail through the woods. And I've been working on it for 20 years now. So that's what I'm doing today. After we finish talking, I'm going out to work on my trail. And wow. It's, uh, How long is the trail? Uh, it's going to be, it, it's when I'm done, it's going to be exactly a quarter mile long, 400 meters. Yes. And, but I mean, it's not through easy terrain. It's going to, it's three feet thick of wood chips because the, um, uh, there's huge boulders in the way. And so far the trail is all the way around, but I haven't wood chipped at all. I'm 200 meters into the wood chipping. And I figure at this pace, by the time I turn about 85, I should be able to go for a good run, quarter mile run around my trail. That's so, perfect. Uh, good timing. And we'll make sure it's walker uh, accessible. Eh? <laughs> well, that's now, the idea so of, that I can go right on a golf cart by then. Yeah. Speaking of walker accessible, you, uh, you, you, you have a cast on today or is it off now? Yeah. I, I, today is, I think, going to be the last day. I've had that on for um, five months now. For how uh, long? I broke my five months. Five I broke months. my foot. Yeah, I broke my foot. Uh, it's a good thing there haven't been any shows because it kind of would have hampered standing all day. Yeah, I broke my foot uh, Thanksgiving weekend out uh, for a run in the woods and I hit a rock that was covered with leaves and I thought I'd just sprain my ankle, but I actually broke it. But I didn't do anything about it for two and a half months. Uh, I thought it would get better, but of course it didn't. And then finally I discovered it was broken. So I've had this cast on for five months now and today is the day I'm going to start walking around the house without wearing the cast. That's so how that, that's you also day. had, I mean, this, uh, the last 15 months for you has, has not been uh, the greatest time in your life. Aside from COVID, uh, you had yeah, another had, little setback. What was that all about? Yeah. I mean, I, I've had incredibly good health and I, you know, I'm anyone who knows me knows I'm really into fitness and exercise and, yes. and uh, a very healthy lifestyle. And last, uh, actually, um, I think today may be the one year anniversary of it. Um, I got, uh, I was working in our woods and I got a whole bunch of black fly bites on my ears and I scratched one, it got infected and uh, it turned into a staph infection, but not just a staph infection on the ear, like on the skin, it got into my bloodstream. And uh, in the space of 24 hours, I went from healthy and healthy and active to being in the hospital and uh, almost dying. Um, and was uh, sort of touch and go for more than a week. I uh, had a huge high temperature and staph infection in my bloodstream. And, and so I spent the rest of the summer, last summer on antibiotics and not completely bedridden, but not very active. And, and then 
finally started getting back into uh, getting back into my normal active lifestyle in the fall. And that's when I broke my foot, but it hasn't really slowed me down particularly. It just, or it hasn't stopped me. It slowed me down a little bit. Like with the broken foot, um, I started a business, I started a business cleaning windows, if you can believe it, when the pandemic hit. I mean, all of us have pivoted, right? Some people yes. have pivoted to just collecting syrup <laughs> and sitting on the couch and drinking beer. Uh, I pivoted by uh, starting a window cleaning business because I love cleaning. I mean, that was yes. my category in the shopping channel. And that was really my category at shows for, for 32 years was cleaning. Um, and I started a business cleaning windows and we're doing really, really well now. We're doing... We're fortunate You're living going in out hustling customers the old fashioned way with flyers. Yeah, that's right. I'm not, a, I'm not a high tech guy. We've got a few, a few people who have, uh, yeah, I'm not a high tech guy. Yeah. We connected so easily today, Larry. Um, uh, yeah. We, we sent flyers around to the whole neighborhood because um, we're not looking to, to clean the windows of the world on, you know, by going, uh, by going, um, with broadcasting, we're looking at narrow casting and we're just, we're doing, doing flyers to all the neighbors and so on. And it's been a year now we've been doing it. It's been, it's been very successful and I really love it. I mean, I, I've take, done a million things in my life. Um, 999,000 of them have been failures. Maybe one was a success, the um, selling stuff at shows and that lasted 32 years, but this I really like, and it's been very successful and, and I really enjoy it. I look forward to doing it each day. You know, I like cleaning. Let's go back to that again, because that that was a very memorable moment for me. Uh, I'd like I'd like to tell my version of the story, and then you can tell yours. I remember you were working. What was it the houseboat rental? Uh, three boys, house, three boys houseboat vacations. Yes, the nineteen eighty six Toronto boat show. Yeah, and you came up to me, and I believe you you watched a couple of demonstrations. Uh, you you just asked me point blank how much I make a year which I wasn't comfortable answering that question. Uh, and then I, then, then, then I remember you asked me what you should do. What, what do I think you should do? A complete stranger, and, but you, you respect. And you told me, and, yes. and I said, I said, I'm selling the, I'm renting these houseboat vacation things and I'm, I'm really hating it and it's not going anywhere. Um, and I have an opportunity to sell cell phones. Now, this was before everyone had a cell phone in their pocket. And this was before, I mean, cell phones were great big block blocks. I had one on my booth at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And uh, so I had been offered an opportunity to sell cell phones. And I said, so what do you think, Larry? I've got an opportunity to sell cell phones. Do you think I should try that? And you said, yeah, definitely. And I did that. And I, I did quite well selling cell phones. But then uh, a year and a half later, um, that that market changed dramatically. Motorola. I think the commission structure changed, didn't it? Yeah, Motor, Motorola just made a decision. Motorola was the, the the big 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 player in that game at that time, and they they were getting killed by all these little players, and they just made a decision literally overnight to take back the entire market, and they ran a huge ad in every newspaper in the world saying, you know, they cut their price by by seventy five percent the next day, and everybody bought every deal that was pending, every deal that was anyone was thinking about buying a Motorola. They or by buying any other phone, they bought a Motorola. So that kind of ended the game for as a salesman's game. So that would have been back what, 82. Was that no 80? That would have been no, 80. no, that was that that was in 1987. That was in 1987. Okay. The, here's the good part I did win a cell phone sales contest for my uh, company that I was working for, and I got a cell phone and I got that number. And that say I've had the same phone number through everything in my whole life since 1987. Find anyone else that you know who's had the same cell phone number since 1987. No, that's that's right. I've gone I've gone through several. Uh, also, Mark, you uh, what when you got into this industry, and uh, I believe uh, I believe chamois were your first time you worked for me at the boat show, was it not? Yeah, um, I called you and said, uh, well, like after we had, after we had talked in 1986 at the Toronto Boat Show, I think I had given you my number. Um, and said, if you ever need someone to do this, I think I could do it. And you you called just before the 1988 Toronto International Boat Show, and you said the guy who was going to work for me uh, just quit. That was Adam, I think his name was. Okay, uh, yes. Adam, Adam just quit or has moved on or doesn't want to work or something like that. And I need someone to sell something at the Toronto Boat Show. So I thought the only thing I'd ever seen you selling was um, car wax or the little red stick, the anti glare. Yes. I assumed that I was going to be selling this little red stick or this anti or the uh, car wax. And I got there and I said, so what am I selling? And you said this big orange rag. And I said, what does it do? And he said, you said, it sucks up a lot of water. 
here, I'll see you in 10 days. <laughs> yeah, what I actually, did. I had to go to the show office. So, uh, so what I said to you was, because I didn't quite leave that. And anyone that knows me, I don't just, <laughs> the, I yeah. went to the show office. I came back uh, without knowing anything about the product or the pitch. You had in like $60. And, uh, yeah. and then you said, are you going to do a pitch for me? And I had my Panasonic phone with me. And I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And then I remember I poured the Coke into the carpet and I, I started padding it up. And of course, my phone rang and I said, I'll be right back. <laughs> and I, I went off and took that call. And I came back in another half an hour and you had a crowd of people. And again, not knowing the pitch, you had pulled in about you know a couple hundred dollars. I believe this went on for a while until I left again. I showed you one other thing about uh, whatever it was. I came back and you had like $600 in on the opening day of the show. And you said to me, are you going to show me a pitch? And I said, to you, how much do you have in? And you said, I have $640. And I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> because, you know, there's an old saying, if it's working, leave it alone. And I think your raw talent is what was selling so many chamois. It was well, so. You know what? I yeah. I came, I came into the business a very different way than most other people did. I, I like cleaning. I like doing repetitive things. And it sounds stupid, but that's one of the things that I've always liked about this business, doing things over and over and over and over again. And most other people at that time in the business came in because their buddy that, they're, that they drank with or their buddy that they did other things with brought them in. Hey, this is my buddy. And he's, you know. And that's how most people came in and they didn't come in with a business background or they didn't come in with an athletic background. They came in with a, with a, this is my buddy I drink with background. Yeah. And I came in with a sports background. I was a distance runner for, I'm up until I broke my foot. I was still a distance runner. Um, I was a distance runner at a very high level for many, many, many years before that. And what I liked about distance running was the repetition of it. I liked doing the same thing over and over. So for most people, the challenge when they get on a pitch booth for the very first time is it's kind of fun and cool to do it the first three or four times, but then by the fourth time and then by the fourth day and by the 10th day and by the second month, it's like, Oh God, I'm saying the same thing over and over again. I like that. I love even right up until the pandemic hit, yeah. I would much rather have been a uh, pitching on a booth um, all day long. I, I just get into a zone. I get, I like it. I yeah. like the feeling of doing that same thing over and over again. And well, your work, your support. work habits are next to none. I've, I've worked uh, across from you. I've worked with you. Uh, I've worked beside you and you motivate me to carry on. And I mean, you and I have been in many situations where the show opens at 10 and you and I do not take a breath until it's over. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. I would, I'm, the same way on the window cleaning now, I would rather do something physical for 12 hours straight without a break. And I, when I say 12 hours straight, as you know, when I worked at the shows, I did not stop. I did not eat. I did not drink. Some days I didn't pee. I mean, I literally, it was relentless. I would start it one minute after 10. And on a Saturday, I would not stop until the show closed. And even on the weekdays, I, I did the same thing. Yeah, because Question I like that feeling of repetition. Mo money aside, because I know where you made most of your money was with the Shamwell. But money yeah. aside, what was your favorite product to work and why? Oh, definitely the chamois because uh, I, I mean, I, I loved all the, the different products I've done. I'm really enjoying doing the, um, the speed cleaner for George McBride yes. and Ocean Sales. I love doing it. Um, it's a very satisfying demonstration. Same, really, it's the exact same pitch as the chamois was. It's you make a mess and you clean it up. You make a mess and you clean it up. You make a mess and you clean it up. <laughs> Ad infinitum. And I really like that. I, I also really like doing the garlic grater a lot. Um, I mean, there was a, a million other products in there along the way that I did. And I think I did pretty well at all of them because I, I really enjoy it. But anything where you make a mess and clean it up, I really like. Or anything where it's a repeating three three or three and a half minute pitch. And that's what the garlic grater is. That's what the chamois is. The car wax, I loved doing the car wax. It was so yeah. much fun. The intricacies of, of that demonstration, you had to have such control over everyone. And, and uh, I learned from, you know, watching you and Steve Rosenberg, really that was the, 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 um, the key was watching you and Steve Rosenberg do it, do it and do it well. That was, that was how I think I got good at it.
the car wax uh, probably, I mean, I love that product from a setup and teardown uh, point of view because you, 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 you just drive previous. it into the show. Yeah, you drive it into the show. And when the show's over, you drive it out and everything went into the trunk. And uh, right. lo- love that aspect of it. I loved uh, working with uh, G Note. And the reason we called him G Note was because at the end of the day, if somebody said how much you got in, uh, he would always say a G Note, even if it was only $700. And so who was G Note? G Note was who Steve was- Rosenberg. Oh, okay, because there's yeah, a guy out in my that neighborhood. Was the, that was my little pet name, G Note. <laughs> Everybody else knew us, of course, as HPWW0012 and <laughs> Right. I, I remember when I remember when Steve, I remember in 1988 at the CNE when Steve uh, that was the first time Vern Peterson and I were working with uh, Larry Lang and we were doing the chamois. And that was the first time the chamois really hit and everyone kind of went, wow. Up until then, Ralph had just been doing them around town and not, you know, he did okay with them. Sure. But 1988 at the CNE was the first time that Vern Peterson put his brilliant brilliance on the pitch booth uh, um, combined with my work ethic and, yes. and Larry Lang's Larry Lang's. Yeah, no, it was an incredible team. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and Steve, at the end of the show, Steve Rosenberg had uh, little, uh, little key fobs made key tags and we all had HPW or HPCW. You, you yes. and Steve were HPWW high powered wax workers in one and two. And then, but he had, Key fobs made HPCW, high power yes, chamois work right. for me and Vern and Larry. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, Mark, it's been quite a journey uh, over the years. I mean, here it is now, and uh, everybody's sort of, uh, I don't know what everybody's uh, doing over, over COVID. A lot of people are just, you know, become complacent, you know, and I think that's not good because it's better when we're out and about and doing things. But I do, I do appreciate just for the time being now, now that I'm over my depression, getting off the hamster wheel. Because I, I just running around week after week with uh, six booths and seven booths and overlapping shows, I, I did enjoy, in hindsight now, the time to reflect. And uh, I'll be making some changes when we open up. Are you? What changes are you going to make when the world opens up? Um. I really haven't decided what my next step is going to be. As I say, I'm really enjoying the the window cleaning. Um, I don't think that's my calling in life <laughs> to do that. And it's very, very, very hard physically. It's been a really nice break, as you say, getting off that hamster wheel. Because as you know, you and I both, we work every single week. I mean, I was pretty much on a booth every week, almost every day for 32 years. Yes. Um, I've enjoyed the break. I really, really, really enjoy doing the... Um, the uh, the aqua blade for George. Uh, I'd like to do. I'd like to do some more shows uh, as an agent. Just as an agent, I don't think I want to get back into being a promoter at all. I love the uh, the sumo slicer that you do. Uh, I think I just want to and, and not be so. Even though we did well and we had money and we didn't need to push, 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 push the way I did every time. I I worked as if I was desperate for money every yeah. single week. Like, oh, I got to make this much money. I got to make this much money. It was how you motivated. And having not, yeah, and having not not made this much money for the last 14 months, I realized I, I can live I can live very comfortably without making this much money every week. Yes. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to, I'd like to work for George and for you and a couple of other selected promoters who have good products and not put too much pressure on and not really feel the urge to to try and be um to try and make big 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 money every week yeah. if if some if it's a good week that's great if it's not a good week i'll enjoy the repetition of saying the same thing over and over again but i won't well, work every week uh, no, no way let's see if we can make all that happen uh what is your plans for the rest of the day today what are you going to do today uh well I like cleaning, so I got to finish cleaning a, a stain off the carpet downstairs. I was working on that before you called, <laughs> and, um, and but mainly working on my wood chip trail. It's a beautiful day out here. Yeah, I've got uh, two big piles of wood chips in the yard, and I'm gradually working over some really rocky areas. And I got a lot of trees to cut, and uh, it's just a beautiful day for wood chip trail making. <laughs> well, Mark, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, listen, you and I go back a long time. You're a very good friend. Um, Say goodbye to everybody, and uh, and uh, we will talk again. It's been great seeing you, Larry. 
And just one question. Say a guy wanted to buy a lot of these. Okay, a guy wanted to buy a lot of these. Okay, thanks. See you, Larry. Okay, see you later, Mark. <laughs>